I am Lawrence Chuno, and this is Doing Jazz. Hello everyone and welcome to Doing Jazz. My name is Lawrence Chuno and this episode is with saxophonist and composer Evan Harris. Evan has a well-developed musical acumen that is a product of his passion for jazz and his distinguished academic background. Evan is currently a master's degree student at the Juilliard School and has performed alongside jazz household names like Wynton Marsalis and Vince Giordano. On his debut album Skylines, Evan presents a classic but personal interpretation of his original compositions. The song playing in the background is titled Inertia. During my conversation with Evan, you'll hear the songs Reinvention and Spring Song. The songs are all from Evan's debut album Skylines. After listening to this episode, you can learn more about Evan Harris by going to the website of the show, www.doingjazz.net, and you can listen to more episodes of Doing Jazz by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, or any of the available podcast vendors. While on iTunes, please rate the show, leave a comment, and share the show with your loved ones. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I present Evan Harris. Evan Harris, welcome to Doing Jazz. Thank you. Great. So, you have a gig in my neighborhood. I do. Okay. What's this gig about? I want to know. <laughs> so, it's so I go to the Juilliard School and I'm a part of a program called the Gluck Fellowship. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we do is there's a group of five of us, mm-hmm. myself on saxophone, and four actors. Mm. And we're an interdisciplinary ensemble and we perform in venues like hospitals and nursing homes and um, all sorts of different places and basically it's an it's an outreach program and we get to play for people who would otherwise not be able to hear music or see a a, a drama performance or see dances and it's great and it just happens to be a few blocks from here yeah that's great yeah i'm glad i asked I was wondering if I should ask or if I shouldn't, but I'm so happy I asked now because it's so um, it's a great thing you're doing. How often do you guys do this? It's on and off, but we have maybe eight performances per semester, mm-hmm. and they're kind of spread out, you know, throughout the semester. And what's the venue for today? It's at a hospital. You I said? think it's New York Presbyterian Hospital. Oh, okay. I think that's on two twenty. I think two twenty. Yeah. 20th, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right at the edge of Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. The very very tip of Manhattan. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. So you mentioned you you go to Juilliard. Yes. You're still in school. Yes. How do you play out a lot? Do I play outside of school? Yeah. Well, funny you mention it. I've made a point of doing just that the past maybe three or four weeks. Um, school's been pretty hectic, and mm-hmm. I'm finally feeling you know at at home here, and it took me at least a year to kind of want to actually go out and and play my saxophone in public oh, and okay. now I'm kind of trying to trying to do just that mm. I know you're from Australia mm-hmm. okay we're in Australia if I may ask Sydney Sydney okay the most beautiful city in the world oh I can't argue because because <laughs> I've never been <laughs> but I've seen pictures and it's very beautiful you know uh, but I've read up on Australia a little bit, but I, I don't know how much I can remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember I remember this term, tall poppy. Tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, what does right. it mean? <laughs> so if you imagine a field of 
you know, a grassy field. Yeah. Amongst the grass, mm -hmm. some poppies grow. And then if you imagine a man coming along and mowing the grass, mm -hmm. the first things that are mowed down are the tallest poppies. Oh. So it's an expression saying that the people who who shine or or work the hardest are often um, subject to criticism and oh. uh, sometimes frowned upon. Wow. Yeah. Would you be considered a tall puppy now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Amongst your friends back home. Well, I guess since I've moved here, maybe I'm a tall poppy in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still just their mate. I see. Okay, so let's go back to the very beginning. You're mm -hmm. from Australia. Um, you moved here. When did you move here? In August of 2016. For school? For school, yeah. Okay. How, how has that been? How do you find uh, it? It's definitely been the steepest learning curve aside from, you know, calculus perhaps <laughs> <laughs> no it's it's been very very rewarding mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I've gotten to know myself mm. and just the the experiences you know that I've had going through school and meeting lots of great people mm -hmm. it's it's been truly the best thing I've done nice. um, has been difficult of mm -hmm. course you know moving away from your friends and your family yeah so, um, at Juilliard, you're in a conservatory mm -hmm. and your program is jazz or is it saxophone? So, I'm doing a, a master's of jazz studies okay. and my major, I guess you'd say, is the tenor saxophone. Oh, okay. okay. And so, all of my classes are centered around jazz music. Mm. How, how have you grown? Because from what I'm hearing from... Uh, what you've said now, you said that you you've l learned to uh, you've learned to understand yourself better mm -hmm. as an artist. Um, is it because of the environment? Is it because in a Juilliard, for instance, in the conservatory environment, you're just um, inundated into your artistic field, or is it because you've met a lot of new people and you you're like in a new environment and you're forced to uh, discover who you are? I think all of those things that you've just mentioned are okay. absolutely true. Um, it's a bit like a, a pressure cooker mm -hmm. in the sense you're just surrounded by lots of highly motivated people yeah. who are very diligent and creative and inspiring to be around. Mm -hmm. And um, the experiences that the school puts you through, you know, just yeah. make you grow as a as an artist and as a person. Mm -hmm. So you're do, you're in a master's program. Yeah. So that means you you got your undergraduate degree in Australia. That's right. Okay. Uh, you probably you went to high school and everything in Australia. Yeah. Uh, I want to know when did you get introduced to jazz? You know. Uh, so my parents had a good jazz record collection. Oh, okay. And when I was growing up. I, <laughs> I look back on my school holidays and just remember waking up to a different CD that my mum was playing mm. each day. And, you know, it was always jazz. Yeah. And so I always loved, loved the music that she was listening to. Do you remember any, uh, some of the artists that she played? Yeah. Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole. Ella Fitzgerald. Oh. Frank Sinatra. Hmm. Yeah. How about the saxophonist that she played? Like, did she play any instrumental music like yours? I'm trying to think of any specific okay. people. I can't recall any specific saxophone players I that see. she used to listen to. Yeah. It's, all a bit, it's all a bit foggy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just remember the feeling. And are they musicians? My parents aren't musicians. Okay. No. And most, most non-musicians that are drawn to music, start uh, that are drawn to jazz, start with the vocal, vocal jazz, you know, and then they get, gradually start appreciating purely instrumental uh, music. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that was your, your, your introduction to jazz. Yes. And in, in high school, let's say in middle school and high school, did you play, did you participate in jazz? I did. Okay. So I start on the, on the flute mm -hmm. and I played classical flute for a long time. Oh, okay. And then eventually decided to pick up the saxophone because it seemed like a, a fun thing to do. The flute was always you know, a, a very 
academic pursuit, I think. And it was, mm. it was stressful in that sense. And so for me, the saxophone was a, a bit of a release from that. Oh, and why? How come? How come? I saw the, the school stage band, yeah, as we call it, which is really a big band. Okay. The school big band was playing and it was playing fun music and mm. music that you could dance to. And yeah. I thought, I'd like to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I picked up the saxophone too. Mm. So yeah, I played, I played in jazz ensembles and, and big bands throughout mm. high school as well. Oh, and then you, you now, did you decide, oh, this is what I want to do? Did you decide that after playing in high school or did you know right from time, from when you were listening to your mother's collection, did you know that you wanted to do this for a living? I wanted to be an architect for a long oh, time. I see. And I'd say probably until I was 17 or so, mm. I was pretty convinced that I'd study architecture or engineering. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just kind of always enjoyed playing music and never really thought of it as much more than that. And then come the end of high school, mm-hmm. you know, you have to put your decisions down on a piece of paper, what you want to study. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I put down, you know, a, a degree in jazz. A degree in jazz? At, at the Sydney Conservatorium. And so... Okay. I always loved it and yeah. it was really fun. Mm-hmm. And here I am sitting on your couch yeah. in Inwood. In Inwood. In, 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 in New York. York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens. It does. Now, let me ask you a question because I'm looking at this from another perspective. Um, I didn't go to school for music, but I've always had my music with me. And now I can cons- I can comfortably call myself a musician. It took me a while because I had never... I had never considered it my profession. I always did it after I did my primary um, uh, profession, my primary occupation. But I'll always be a musician, Mm -hmm. you know. Now, from the little conversation I've had with you, it seems like even before we started recording, it seems like you have a a little bit some other... um, other interests, including mathematics, now architecture, okay? And you're a fantastic musician. Do you think you would ever consider going back to um, those those other fields like architecture or mathematics? Not necessarily full-time, but just to explore, explore the fields? I don't, I don't know if I'd pursue something else like that okay as an occupation Mm -hmm. but i i I certainly do kind of exercise my interest in architecture with a film camera Mm. and i just enjoy walking around and looking at buildings Mm -hmm. taking photos of buildings Mm -hmm. and you might notice that the album is called skylines yeah and it's very much inspired by just the the beauty of and the, the asymmetry of the yeah. New York skyline. And mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. I just find it really kind of overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, it does actually inform the music, I you see. know, my interest in architecture. I okay. And I feel like I approach composition at least architecturally. I think I, think I do at least. Mm-hmm. I like to think of it like that mm-hmm. with that different sense. spaces. That and, makes sense. Even even the listing of your... Of your songs on your album uh it's called skyline and then there's one skyline at sunrise Mm -hmm. skyline at midday and then there's skyline at at night sunset so so sunset yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. so i mean one could think of that as uh sequentially and which is mathematical which could be also considered architectural in some in some way yeah how did you end up at juliet so my lecturer at the Sydney Con. Actually, I was in high school when I was learning the saxophone from him, Mr. David Thieck. Okay. Um, he suggested... Hello, when, David. Hi, you're David. listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he suggested when I was maybe in year 10 or year 11, sorry, 10th grade or 11th yeah, grade. Yeah, I understand. I'm Nigerian, <laughs> so we have the British system, which is closer to oh, so the, the Australian system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dave suggested that I think about 
coming over here. And at a young age, that was really exciting. Mm -hmm. Just the prospect of moving to New York to study music was a pretty lofty ambition. Why is it lofty? Why? You lived For all of the reasons, well, now in hindsight, just all of the reasons that I mentioned before, just Mm -hmm. moving away from your family, moving away from your friends, living halfway, almost halfway across the, you know, across Mm -hmm. the other side of the planet. Mm -hmm. And it's expensive and Mm. it's challenging. Mm -hmm. But so Dave suggested that. And um, it was kind of always at least on the back burner through my undergrad degree. Mm -hmm. And come the last year of my undergrad degree, I just thought I'd throw my hat in the ring and came over and auditioned and... Yeah, I got and you spot. got it, and you got you got a scholarship, right? Yeah, nice. That's awesome. I want us to talk. I could talk about you and your background all day, but I want us to talk about the album. Sure, <laughs> it's called Skyline. Uh-huh. Um, I listened to it, I a few times, and um, I like your approach to it, and I enjoy the fact that. <clears throat> It's in a way it's traditional, you know. You took the pr- traditional approach to jazz, and um, it, but at the same time, one could see see you in the album. One could feel your your uniqueness in the album. You know, I some a few of the tracks I relate to the most. I think two of them is um, one is reinvention. I like how. Um, I don't know. It makes me, I could say it's a little bit introspective. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word for that's that. The but that's the perfect word. That's the word that's that comes to me, word, yeah. you know. And then I just like the melody of a spring song, you know. Um, so I'll let you talk about the album. Well, firstly, <laughs> that's my take on the album. <laughs> <laughs> firstly, thank you. You're welcome. That's, that's very kind of you. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned reinvention. Mm-hmm. And... You use the word introspective Mm -hmm. and that hits the head on the nail. Mm -hmm. It's that song is specifically about introspection Mm -hmm. after, you know, coming to terms with moving over here and Trump being elected Mm -hmm. and, you know, (laughs) breaking up with a girlfriend in Sydney. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of like, all right, that's it. It's over. Or, all right. It, it is what it is, and we just keep moving forward. So that's what that is. It's definitely about introspection. Nice. And Spring Song is about, it's kind of about playing Frisbee Mm. in Central Park on one of the first few days of the summer of 2017. It was just unbelievable to finally have to get rid of my winter jacket, wear a (laughs) t-shirt and play Frisbee with my mates.
so it's it's very much <laughs> it's very much about my my poor southern hemispherical body yeah uh, finally getting to see the see the light of day again mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. what song do you connect with the most on the album I think possibly spring song because it's the most recent of those mm-hmm. compositions and I just find that that it really uh, I don't know that the style just really resonates with me I've always loved bossa nova and mm-hmm. Brazilian music and I find it kind of relaxing I mm-hmm. suppose mm-hmm Um, the instrument uh, i- instrumentation on the song I think it's just a quartet on spring song it's quintet quintet okay but on the whole album you have like on the average it's on quintet. all it's all yeah it's okay. all quintet two saxophones mm-hmm. okay um, is there any reason why you have two sax like another person backing you up with a, a saxophone or I picked those specific musicians mm-hmm. so it's Will Vinson is playing alto saxophone and I've just always loved what's his name Will Vinson okay Will Vinson okay and saw him play when I was living in Sydney and was just blown away mm-hmm. and then also used to listen to a lot of Sean Whalen's music Sean Whalen's an amazing Australian pianist who's lived in New York for okay. at least you know I think nearly two decades or so mm-hmm. um And listen to his music growing up as well. And Des White, you know, I, again, the same story, has lived in New York for ages, is a very accomplished bass player. And I love his music as well. Jochen Rukert plays the drums. And once again, you guessed it, I just really like his playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for whether there's a specific reason that I have two saxophones, yeah, I just always really wanted to play with will and okay it was a, a good excuse to do just that. <laughs> nice <laughs> um i'm gonna ask you this open question okay um what made you record this album why okay i applied for a an australia council for the arts mm-hmm. schools and development grant mm-hmm. and my application involved a series of lessons and the observation of some rehearsals and some rehearsals of my own and then eventually the recording session so basically the i got this government grant australian government grant to come over here and have lessons with each of those four people mm-hmm. and write music with them alongside them and then see how they operate you know i went to their gigs and hung out with them mm-hmm. and then have some rehearsals with them to workshop the music and then go into the studio mm-hmm. so that's what that's what really started the whole thing was this this grant okay okay um another open question <laughs> now what's the goal what's the goal of the album do you just um want it want to use it to showcase yourself that you are this jazz musician who understands the tradition or is there another goal i think ultimately it's it's my first expression of myself as an artist okay nice and i see it i see it as an honest kind of snapshot of mm. where i am musically mm-hmm. on the 15th and 16th of May in 2017 oh. you know I, I the goal the goal of the album for me was to make I've already used the word honest I, I mm-hmm. you can use it again yeah I just I, <laughs> I really wanted to to write and play music that I was hearing at the time yeah without it being contrived or mm-hmm. forced or trying to make mm-hmm. too bold a statement it's okay. really just music that nice kind of represents me nice musically and as a person I think. Mm. it kind of answers my next question my next question was going to be why the traditional 
approach because the 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 setup is kind of traditional the recording is warm and mm-hmm. jazzy and you were not trying to um ma- like make it quote unquote modern it's modern in mm-hmm. a way it's modern but uh as you say it's an honest reflection of what you're listening to now what you're playing now where you are now as an artist so i i totally understand i want to ask you some uh technical questions sure. um how do you practice? Uh, I always buzz the mouthpiece. You you do what? So, <laughs> if you can picture a, a saxophone yeah, mouthpiece uh-huh. with a reed and the ligature holding okay. the reed on. Okay. I'll always buzz scales in seconds, thirds, fourths, and mm-hmm. fifths. Uh, in on, C major. Okay. From C up to A and mm-hmm. then back down to C and then back down to F mm-hmm. and then back up. And then I do triads and then like expanding scales mm-hmm. so i'm gonna embarrass myself and sing a little bit kind of sounds like this <laughs> that sort of exercise mm-hmm. on the mouthpiece mm-hmm. and then i play harmonics overtones with the full saxophone mm-hmm. and then a few exercises to really focus the airstream and and hone in on the sound mm-hmm. and then some scale exercises. They kind of change depending on what I'm trying to work on. Mm-hmm. At the moment I'm playing bebop scales, dominant seventh bebop scales grouped in sevens and ascending. Mm. Um, and that's just to try and create some fluidity into my fingers. Yeah. And then I'll practice playing a tune in 12 keys. Wow. Um, like you, and, you play. Let me get this. Yeah. So let's say um, "Misty," for instance, by Aerogana. So you, it's in maybe E flat. Sure. <laughs> so you played in E flat. You played in F. You played in F sharp, and so forth. The, on the same day, mm-hmm. or do you like say, okay, I'm gonna work on this on E flat, and then another day come to it, in the next key, and so forth. I live with a great trumpet player mm-hmm. David Adewumi mm-hmm. also of Nigerian descent mm-hmm. purely Nigerian <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and Dave and I like to play we've got a few songs that we like to do in 12 keys mm-hmm. but often we'll just say let's work on a new tune in 12 keys mm-hmm. and from that day it will be you know we'll do all 12 keys on the one day hmm. and we'll alternate what does he play again? he plays trumpet okay yeah so we we like to work on you know, the one tune mm-hmm. in 12 keys on in the one session, mm-hmm. basically. Hmm. Now, if somebody presents you with a new song um, and asks you to uh, to um, be, be a sideman or something in his band or her band, how do you learn the song? What's learn the first the, thing you do? The first thing I do is learn the melody okay, and be able to sing it. Oh. For sure. And then probably what play. does that do? It's the most, it's the most important part of the music. Mm-hmm. Is the melody? Mm-hmm. Oh, how about if the person is a singer and the person already sings the melody? It still makes sense for you to really know the melody and internalize it. Right, okay. it's a good point of reference mm-hmm. at the very least. Mm. You know, it's a lot more than that. Um, and learning the structure of it being Mm. able to feel it rather than having to count through it if it's, Mm. you know, an unusual form or something. Um, If I can, I like to play it on the piano as well. Okay. Um, And then, of course, practicing playing it on your instrument is important too. Mm. You mentioned that you started by playing classical flute, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I was reading an article... um, by a trump a trumpeter his name is sean jones i don't know if you know of him okay <laughs> he was saying that as a as as a jazz musician that he still tries to keep his classical background because they help him with discipline in a way that uh, classical allows you to um read something as it's written and really nail it without 
have letting without letting your tendency your proclivity to solo take over you you know do you do you, do you understand what i'm saying yeah do you agree with that <laughs> definitely okay i think when people conceive of like the classical tradition mm -hmm. in reference to to jazz musicians specifically mm -hmm. i think i think they're really looking for the the set of discipline sorry the 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 sets of skills and mm -hmm. the discipline that come along with playing classical music okay. not necessarily the music and the art itself but those skills that learning that music brings mm. so i feel like most jazz musicians will maintain elements of you know their classical upbringing or mm -hmm. or training mm -hmm. as you will um in one way or another just in the way that they practice and the way that you have kind of have to practice the instrument just to mm -hmm. to um you know stay up to date and as for uh kind of battling that urge to just solo the yeah. whole time <laughs> <laughs> it's a constant struggle hey <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, d I don't know i think again it boils down to just you need to assess whether improvising right now is going to serve the music mm -hmm. positively or negatively. I think often when I'm playing with other musicians who um, who are, you know, more adept at just playing mm -hmm. a lot of things, I, I kind of try and balance that out by playing even less. And then I think in the opposite sort of situation, you kind of have to balance that by playing more. You know, it's all just yeah, compromises. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm, well said. I have another question to ask you. This is a, this is a, I just want to uh, know your take on this. You know, <laughs> um, you can ask, answer however you, <clears throat> you can answer this question however you feel like. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, you know, jazz is, is a black American music. It's, uh, it's, its origin is from the African American tradition um, in in America, the U.S. I was just wondering how. What's your take on that? As an Australian, uh, playing jazz music is pretty. I think it's a great thing. You know uh, that jazz has become universal. You know, it's. I think it's always been. It's there's always been people from all over the world contributing to to jazz. But do you ever do you ever reflect on that? You know. Absolutely. Okay. I'm just trying to think how to articulate my response. However, you feel like you're you're in a safe place. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely feel safe. Um, well, firstly, I think that's that's the beauty of the music mm -hmm. is that it's so universal, and it's it's really a tool that allows anyone of any, you know, any background to mm -hmm. express themselves. Yeah. So for that, I'm very grateful. And as, a, as an Australian jazz musician in New York playing a music that, that was, you know, so, so powerful in creating social change and, you know, fighting against segregation and civil rights. Mm -hmm. um, it just goes to show how how powerful the music and music in general is. So mm -hmm. I I don't feel... I, I used to feel a bit funny playing American music, <laughs> but now I just... You own it now. I just, you, treat you, it as, yeah. I just treat it as though you know, we're all playing music and exactly. there's no... Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter where you come mm -hmm, from. Mm-hmm. And everybody brings their own uniqueness, their own background to That's to right. it at, at at each point in time. Good, I like that answer. I want to play a little game with you. This sure. game is called Turn Up. Oh, before that, <laughs> I I wanted to ask you a question. Yeah. Who are you? Who do you listen to? Who are your influences? Saxophone players. Saxophone players specifically. Yeah. yeah. I love people that are still around today. Um, it doesn't matter. Okay. I love 
Seamus Blake's saxophone sound. What's his name? Seamus Blake. He's Seamus Blake. Blake. Yeah. Okay. So S E A M U S. Okay. S-E-A. And then B L A K E. Okay. And I also really love Chris Cheek's saxophone sound and just overall concept. Okay. And then I love John Coltrane okay. and Charlie Parker and Stan Getz. Mm. I think uh, they're probably my f- top five favorite saxophone players. Nice. How about Miles? Sorry? Miles Davis. Miles Davis, sure. Okay. I love, <laughs> love his music, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, this game is called Turn Up Mute. All right. I'll give you two options. The one you, you're feeling at the moment um, you, you said turn up to it and maybe you explain why you turn that up and we mute the other. And it does not mean that you don't care for the other one, right? It just means sure. this is what you're feeling at the moment, okay? Okay. All right. We're going to start with the discussion we just had. <laughs> sure. Uh, John Coltrane, Charlie Parker, who do you turn up? Who do you mute? Oh, my goodness. Yes, it's hard. That's cruel. Yes. <laughs> uh Turn up, Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker. Why? His music was the genesis of all the jazz music that came, mm. you know, from his time mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and to this day. Hmm. I love Coltrane. He's looking, he's looking down at me. <laughs> I, think, I think he's probably nodding in agreement. Yeah, and he's very spiritual, so I'm sure, <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah. sure he's listening. Pensively. <laughs> Good. All right. The next one. Sydney. New York. Maybe that's an easy one. You have mm. to choose one. D- different and be frames, careful. Different frames of reference. Right now for me, yes. turn up New York. Okay. okay. Because Makes sense. I'm here loving it. It's such an amazing place to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like I've got a home here. But Sydney, you know, in 10 years' time. Yeah, Sydney. Turn Sydney up. Where do you live in New York? I live on 148th and Broadway. Okay, okay. Just a bit south Hamilton of Hamilton Heights. Hamilton Heights, yeah. Hamilton. Okay. Cool. Above the chipped cup. Mm, nice, nice spot. <laughs> and lastly, be careful. Mm-hmm. Inertia, reinvention. These are two songs from your album. You're pitting me against myself. Yes. You have to choose one of your children. <laughs> Reinvention. Reinvention. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Nice. Why? Oh, Why? you already explained. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> no, but I want you to explain again. <laughs> sure. No, it's... I think it... It ref, It's about me mm-hmm. as I am now, whereas inertia is, is about a time of my life where, you know, I was coming to terms with focusing on saxophone and dealing with, you know, other elements of my life that, you know, weren't going mm-hmm. quite so sweetly. But reinvention is is about me kind of being comfortable. Nice, nice. Evan Harris, thank you for coming on Doing Jazz. My pleasure. Thanks I hope for having we can, me. Thank you. I hope we can do this again. Yeah, love to. All right. Later. <laughs>